What's up, 40 people? Today, I'm gonna to turn this piece of oak into this amazing table. It's a fire epoxy table. Let's get weird. But first, safety. Oh. Now that I've got my pieces cut, I'm just gonna use pocket screws to assemble this and I'm not even gonna use glue. Why am I not using glue? Because where we're going, we don't need glue. Link in description below. So I've got these marked to line these up and I've got a circle drawn here in the center where I don't want anything. Now I'm gonna use my handy dandy clamp to keep these level while I screw them together. Link in description below. Now that I've got it screwed together, I've got my starter hole drilled. I'm gonna use the world's most accurate jigsaw to cut a hole in the center of this. And I don't really know exactly what I want. I'm just gonna let the wood talk to me and tell me where to put it. What? What? <gasps> you shut your mouth, you filthy piece of oak. You're gonna burn! Hole's done. It's time to burn. Now I'm gonna be burning this with this propane powered weed burner I picked up at the hardware store. Let's go. When I made the fire epoxy guitar, I used a soft wood for that and it really burned up quickly and got that deep crackly, just devastating look. And for this, I'm using red oak. And as you can see, it's taking quite a bit more fire and time to really burn it up and blacken it. You can just start to see it in that bottom right corner. I do love a good fire on a cold day. I have let this dry overnight and I gotta be really careful with how I handle this because it is pretty crumbly. One spot right here already broke off, which is fine because it just kind of adds to the look that I'm going for. I don't want it, I want it to look very natural and busted and burnt, so I think that'll work fine. I'm just gonna lay out some wax paper on top of my workbench here, and I'm gonna put some tabletop one-to-one -one epoxy on, on this, and I'm gonna put it on the back first, and then I'm gonna flip it over because I don't really care what the back or the bottom looks like. I just wanna get it coated, and then I'm gonna put a thin coat on the front of it to make sure that it seals this up pretty good. If you haven't seen the guitar video that I did, the Shao Shugi Bon or whatever you want to call it guitar, the, I had lots of issues with bubbles. Even though I sealed it like two or three times, I didn't put a thick enough coat on it and the bubbles were still coming through whenever I put the last coat on. So I want to make sure that doesn't happen with this.
Now, mama told me to be a simple kind of man, so I don't have a pressure pot. So as you can see, this epoxy is full of bubbles. And uh, you know, what can I say? I gotta work with what I gotta work with. Anyway, I'm just putting a pretty thick coat on the back of this because I don't care if there's bubbles in this, you're not gonna see it. I'm just gonna flip it over and then I'll put a better coat over here, nice and thick, but uh, yeah, lots of bubbles. But don't worry, we'll get the torch out and fix that. Twenty four drying hours later. So that worked out really well. I'm just gonna take a Dremel tool and ow! I just watch out for those edges. I'm gonna take a Dremel tool and go around this and get rid of these these you know pour overs or whatever you want to call it these puddles. Actually, never mind on that. Let's take it over to the bandsaw first. It finally dawned on me about halfway through my dremeling and grinding process that I should be doing this over my downdraft sanding table that I made that you should watch the video of. Once the edges were smooth, I just sanded everything with 120 and then 220. In the past when I've done this, I just stapled these together, but I thought I'd go full on professional this time. So I've got my tabletop in my form now, and I ran two screws at each one of these corners from underneath to hold it in place. To determine how much epoxy I need, I'm gonna use the trick I used when I did the uh, fire epoxy guitar, and I'm gonna use these airsoft pellets to fill in the space and then put them in my bucket, and that'll tell me how much epoxy I need. For this deep pour, I'm going to be using liquid glass. This is good for a two to four inch thick pour, and I'm just at about an inch and a quarter here at my thickest part anyway. So this is a two part resin to one part curing agent. I'm actually gonna do two and a quarter liters, just to be safe. I totally forgot to level my form before I poured it, so I had to go back afterwards and I just made sure that my level was totally clean so I didn't drop any dust into this. 
Three days later. I came back and checked this several times over about an eight hour period from whenever I first poured it and it just looked perfect. But we had kind of high humidity, so I don't know if that affected it or not. But once I went to bed, it developed some bubbles and it's actually kind of uh, got some lines running through it. I think from shrinkage from whenever it was drying, maybe a little too fast. I'll go ahead and get it out of here. We'll see what we're working with, but I do know that I'm at least gonna have to put one more tabletop coat on top of this anyway. I started out sanding this with the orbital sander with 120 and realized I needed to move up to the belt sander to get this totally flat. Then I went back with the 120 on the orbital and instead of using a router I just used the sander to ease the edges on the corners of the tabletop. I won't bore you with all of the footage but basically I went back, poured the back side of it, let that dry overnight, then came back the next day and put what will be the final coat on the top of the tabletop. The final coat of epoxy has dried and I think it came out pretty good. And now I'm going to attach it to, I just happen to have this metal base. And now I'm gonna attach it to that. And this is where my drill battery went dead. Yep, uh, the struggle is real. <laughs> the struggle is real here, folks. I left my main drill at another location and I'm stuck using these other drills that are not appropriate for the situation. Here it is, the finished piece, our Shao Shugiban, hole in the center, blown out, fire, epoxy table, whatever you want to call it. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I don't know if this is rustic or modern, or if this is even a table, or if it's actually just a preserved outhouse seat. You let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time.